Oh, oh, I love your background. I need to get. I needed to sort that out. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd look the part. Well, how's things? Have you been all good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All good. All good. I've got a broken hand, but apart from that, all good. So. Was that an accident at home, or did you get that on movie set? Uh, a very boring accident at home. No, no exciting movie stories, unfortunately. <laughs> but I need to come up with an exciting movie story. <laughs> You've got Punch coming out soon, which you wrote and directed and produced, <laughs> I believe. Um, what was the inspiration behind the movie? Um, the inspiration, um, first and foremost, was uh, to create a British slasher movie um, and something that could potentially be franchisable um, to do, you know, number two, number three, number four um because we don't really have any kind of iconic slasher killers there's no freddy there's no jason you know out of this country um you know we do do we do obviously do loads of horror movies when we do do some slasher movies but none of really kind of spawn those kind of sequels um so that's where it kind of came from and i had a whole bunch of terrible ideas um he'd you know he'd be in a bowler hat or a, a suit or a union jack cloak i don't know all of these terrible things um and then i came up with the seaside setting um of this seaside town in winter and then yeah just straight out of that mr punch was born and as soon as you kind of think oh mr punch from punch and judy then everything kind of comes off the back of that you know he's he's you know he's already a violent character it's not yeah. like example what they had to do with Winnie the Pooh which just take this lovable character and try and make him violent even in the kids puppet show he beats his wife he beats his child he beats the policeman he's got all these catchphrases he's got his big stick it kind of wasn't a huge stretch to take him into a horror character and designing the mask to look the way it did did you what was the like well, background behind it I got out here. Uh, I thought I'd uh, use this as a prop. Uh, so here's the mask for those who haven't seen it. Um, it's, it's quite as freaky as it did in the film. Yeah, I mean, getting the mask right is such a huge part of you know creating a slasher killer. If you if you want to create a slasher. You've got to get the mask right. Um, so yeah, this is that's a bespoke design. So I drew literally drew a picture, sent it to this company in Ireland uh, called Rubber Johnnies, and they make um, latex masks and latex props and stuff. And so we kind of worked on it with rubber them. Johnnies, yeah. Rubber Johnnies, Rubber Johnnies, and they called, and they make yeah rubber rubber props. That's brilliant. I never heard of that. I live over here and I've never heard of that. That's yeah. Uh, yeah, Rubber Johnny. So uh, by a guy called Clive, he'll love the shout out. Um, but yeah, they, yeah, they do a great bunch of masks. And yeah, they, they kind of sell their own masks as well. Um, but they also, you know, can design and make bespoke ones. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, they put it in a box and posted it over to me that I knew if it would work. And yeah, I put it on showed my wife and she was like yeah that's horrible never wear that in the house again and i was like okay she was like never wear that around our child <laughs> you will never sleep i was like okay this 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 is going to be good um and then on set it was working um with our actor who played him in the suit um to kind of create the character um and yeah the mask almost has kind of magical powers in that um uh mark who played him he's a stunt performer so he just kind of wanted to get the physicality and he was meant to read the lines but only as a guide track um but he put the mask on and suddenly he transformed into mr punch and all the squeaky voice and all of this um kind of came out of him so it's his voice we used in the film um That's I thought that was a voice box. um it was uh uh, we recorded them afterwards in ADR and then, you know, did a little bit of digital tweaking. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's all the stunt guy marks um, acting in it. 
Um, because yeah, we were gonna get a voice performer or something. Um, but yeah, he just became Mr. Punch on set. So he kind of kept in and kept in a lot of his kind of ad libs and things. Um, but the actual voice, if you're doing it in the puppet show, is done with a, a small piece of metal called a swazzle, and that goes in the back of the performer's throat. Uh, so we looked into could we do that, but that's way too dangerous, and especially doing it on set if he's running around. Uh, but a combination of kind of you know him, you know, changing his voice and uh, a bit of digital addition to it, we managed we managed to get it there without risking somebody dying <laughs> swallowing the piece of metal. And then filming in the UK as well was. Was that a challenge too? As we know, the UK and the seaside is not exactly the warmest of places, especially at night. Uh, yeah. I mean, we filmed in March most of it um, in Hastings, which is on the south coast. Uh, and in the day, the weather was really nice, actually. Like, some of the crew were out in shorts. We were eating ice creams. It was nice. But then the temperature dropped at night. And, yeah, there's, we did two days of night shoots on the beach, and it snowed. It was like minus one or something. It was horrendous. It was, yeah. Um, the one kind of saving grace was that the film was set in the winter. So the actors are all wearing coats. Yeah. It wasn't one of those things where I go, I'll pretend it's summer. You're all in bikinis. And, you know, they would have murdered me if that was the case. But at least they could wear a coat. Um, if you were to do a sequel, like you discussed, at the start of our chat um would you like to keep it sort of in the seaside sort of surrounding or would you like to move punch around the uk um initially i mean i've got a bunch of ideas worked out uh i mean we'll see you know it all depends on kind of where the funding comes from really uh but the idea would be to kind of do at least one more in a seaside setting and explore the, you know the sort of the background behind the character and and without giving away too much you know what's really going on in this town um but then yeah in future installments i'd like to take him out of the uk um imagine mr punch in vegas or mr punch in thailand um just terrorizing a completely different culture and people who don't necessarily understand him who, who get him um just putting him in an alien environment um and that was always the intention, try and create a strong enough character that, you know, A, has enough interest in him, you'd want to find out more about him in sequels, but also he would be strong enough to take and put into completely different settings. Yeah. Um, you know, punch on spring break, you know, in Miami. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. Yeah. And what was it like working with Jamie Lomas? Um, he's known for his role in Hollyoaks um, as Warren. What was it like working alongside him? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's great. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd seen him in Hollyoaks. I knew he kind of had um, that sort of edge that we were looking for for the character. Uh, and, you know, in physicality, I wanted him to be quite a big guy in this. Um, and, yeah, and yeah, he was amazing. Because, um, yeah, he's really into independent film as well you know he obviously Hollyoaks is his bread and butter but whenever he's not working on that he's also working on independent productions um so he's been really supportive um and it was important to get him in there and um Kirsten Waring who plays the lead character's mother as well um she's obviously got a huge amount of experience and been in you know so many movies and tv shows um because our young cast quite inexperienced I mean they're all brilliant and they didn't really need the help um but I wanted to kind of put some more established actors around them um to kind of play the older characters in it with the cast there it was brilliant everyone sold the part as they were meant to um I really enjoyed as well you know the it's hard without giving stuff away the scene at like the house sort of party going on when Mr. Punch enters and then you get like the um I get the feeling as well, maybe because of like time and budget, but you got the feeling that you wanted to go bigger with that. Am I right? Yeah, I mean 
that's obviously you know, the other thing I'd like to do in the sequel is you know go that Terrifier two route and spend the extra money on on physical effects um, because we were limited uh, by some of the kind of kills and deaths um, by budget really because they're obviously practical effects are are expensive and take a lot of time to set up uh, so. That would be one thing that I want to see in the sequel. So we had to be very kind of picky and choosy about okay, which deaths are we gonna see in gory detail, and then which deaths are gonna be kind of you know a quick death off camera or yeah. you know. Um, one of the final questions I'd like to ask you as well is you touched upon how like remember at the start as well you said about like the Winnie the Pooh horror movie. Do you have one coming out as well? Cinderella's hold, Revenge? Hold on two seconds. My hat is... Yeah, He'd scratch throughout the rest of the interview if I didn't let him out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yes. So, uh, yeah, if you want to repeat that question, sorry. Yeah, so um, we were saying about Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and then you've also got, like, a fairy tale movie coming out, Cinderella's Revenge. Yeah, I mean that was that was um a director for hired job, um, hired by um Rebecca Matthews, who co-produced Punch with me. She'd been hired by a couple of American companies uh to do this Cinderella movie. Uh, and obviously that's kind of quite big at the moment, there's kind of horror versions of fairy tales and horror versions of Disney characters. Um, and I was mainly attracted to it because I've never done a period drama before. Um, and so just the thought of working with costumes in old country houses and lighting everything with candles. And, you know, I'd never done anything like that before. I'd only ever done contemporary stuff. So I was like, uh, yeah, sounds fun. Uh, and yeah, and there's again, there's a fair amount of death and gore and bloodshed in that one. And, and I got to work with uh, Natasha Henstridge on that one, um, who viewers of a certain age will remember from Species, um, the 90s sci-fi classic. Um, that was kind of her breakout. And uh, so, yeah, it was really great to work with her. And she's super lovely, super talented. And she plays the fairy godmother, I believe. Is that right? Yes. So she plays the fairy godmother, yes, which is, uh, you know, Every now and again, you know, you're, you're working in movies, your life throws up weird situations. <laughs> and one of those was, what am I doing today? I'm working with Natasha Henson from Species. She's playing the fairy godmother in Cinderella. <laughs> and we shot in um, Minehead uh, in Somerset. Uh, another coastal thing, even though we, we weren't shooting by the... It was not, the film was nothing to do with the sea, but that was where the, the loca location was. Um so I think that, and that was, you know, a seaside town out of season. Uh, so I think that was a bit of a culture shock for the Americans because obviously Natasha came over and a lot of the American producers came over uh, straight over from LA and uh, having to deal with March weather. And there was a lot of night shoots on that as well. Um, the worst day was, um, no spoilers, but we were, we shot in a maze and... And I was like, oh, here we go. I could live out my Kubrick shining fantasies by shooting in a maze. But it's really difficult to shoot in a maze because you're like, okay, I need that actor who's standing over there on the other side of the hedge to come to me here or that, that light. Suddenly you have to go all the way round. It takes like, you know, 10 times as long to do anything. And everyone had to have a map on their phone because you're like, okay, I just need to get there to the other side of this hedge. But to do that, I've got to go, you know, five minutes around this way. It's uh, it was it was quite frustrating, and it rained the whole time. Um, that was that was, uh, you know, we laugh about it later, but at the time, that was that was a hard day. So, is it safe to assume that you're going to start, go on, and end 2024 with horror movies? Yeah, I mean. I love horror movies. Uh, they're what I want to make. It's what I watch. I mean, if somebody wants to pay me money to do a rom-com, I will happily do it. Um, but until then, um, yeah, I think I'm going to continue with the horror. Uh, although I am looking at doing an action movie, uh, potentially producing 
rather than directing. Um, but I'm you know, working on a script with a whole up and coming uh, action director at the moment. So, keeping on. It was awesome speaking with you, and I can't wait for the wider public to see Punch. It's a fun British horror movie, and fingers crossed we do get to franchise it. Excellent. Yeah, I'd I'd love I'd love to be yeah talking to you this time next year about Punch too. Well, fingers crossed we get it, and hopefully I get to speak to you once Cinderella comes out. Yes, yes, as soon as I know uh, some dates on that. Hopefully, yeah, it should be, it'll be this year, the, the, it's finished, so uh, we'll see. Obviously, it all depends on distribution, sales and everything, but the movie is finished, and so hopefully we'll be out this year. No problem, I, mean, I can't wait to see it, um, because the likes of Blood and Honey 2 and the Mickey Mouse one, Coming to the screens, the Cinderella one should break out and be a huge hit for you. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm hoping. There is actually a rival Cinderella movie made, made by those. Yeah, there's there's two Cinderella horrors coming out. So, uh, but I yeah, I I mean I I know a lot of the cast and crew of that one, so uh, they're not really rivals. I'm hoping to do a double screening <laughs> and, and, and watch it like, uh, and and see 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 both of them together. Well, best of luck with the release of Punch, Andy. And it's been awesome thank speaking you. with you. Cool, thank you. I'll see you again. Yep, I'll, yes, I'll see you soon. Sorry, my cat's climbing on me. <laughs> <laughs>